you know what? I have a need. I have a need to make a Penelope Featherington inspired dress. G'day everyone, so today I am starting a brand new project and well yes it is to make a Penelope Featherington inspired gown. Like so many people I thoroughly enjoyed Bridgerton, so much so that I actually made this video only a couple of days ago and well that's why the backdrop's still up because your girl is a little bit lazy. And yes, there is no secret, I am absolutely obsessed, I love the Featheringtons and especially Penelope, hence why I feel like I need to make her at this point. Now if you did see my previous video in regards to Penelope Featherington and her costumes, which I definitely say check that out if you haven't already, then you will know that she has 26 costumes, or at least that's as many as I counted throughout the show. And I have decided to make this costume, or at least one that has been inspired by it. Yes, I made a reference board of this dress. However, the slight twist to this is that I'm only going to be using stash fabrics. And yes, I am fully aware that I'm not going to be recreating this dress exactly because I do not have that crazy lace and brocade and also taffeta in my stash. <laughs> However, I do think that I've got something in my stash that I can use to kind of give me that same vibe. In terms of patterns, I'm going to be using this pattern again, which I used for my Regency gown from before. Uh, I'll leave that video up there as well. <laughs> Shameless self-plug! This pattern worked really quite well. There's only one or two things that I need to do, like I need to lengthen the shoulder strap slightly, I think. It was a little bit high up, but hey! Cutting off mid-boob is basically on brand for Penelope Featherington, so mm, if it's too short, oh well. Alright, so enough of the yibba yabba, let's get to it. Let's go pull some fabrics, let's have a discussion, let's see what we've got to work with. Okay, so all the fabrics have been pulled along with a few other little pieces. I still have no idea what I'm going to do for jewellery, but you know what, we'll cross that bridge later. So for now, let's start off with the fabric that I pulled. Starting with this silk twill. So this silk twill is one that I got for Jigglypuff and then realised it was way too dark. Uh, it is absolutely gorgeous, it's so so soft and I'm very excited to use it. But then, I had a thought. You see... I have a fabric that I feel is so Penelope that I really have to use it for this project. It's not this. I remembered that I have this. This is a polyester taffeta, which I've had in my collection for a few years now, and it is a pink shot with yellow. If that is not Penelope Featherington, I don't know what is. It frays a bit, so I'll need to overlock everything, which is totally period, period accurate, right? However, I really, really like this, and I think it will work well, and it will also bring a little bit of a glimmer of yellow to a very pink costume, because, let's face it, Penelope needs a fair bit of yellow in her life, because that's her colour. Okay, so that's the main fabric. Now let's move on to kind of the more trims, I guess. So one thing about this outfit is that it's kind of like a tiny, like, overlay, kind of almost bolero-esque style. And they have it as this beautiful brocade. Um, I do not have anything similar. However, I do have this absolutely gorgeous silk organza with silk velvet flowers. This is one of my most favourite fabrics that I've got in my collection. I have not been able to use it. I will not be using a lot of it. So I'm very happy to be able to sacrifice, if you will, a little bit of this fabric just to bring that little bit of like crazy upper class goodness to this costume. And I still think it's very, very much on brand with Penelope. Or rather, on brand for the Featheringtons. Let's be real here. Now, on top of all of that, 
there's this crazy kind of applique lace kind of trim thing that's happening that has a lot of flowers to it. I have this kind of mesh fabric that has an embroidery to it. I have no idea where this came from. It could be my grandmother's. I know it was given to me because I certainly would never pick this for myself. But, hey, it's gonna be used, or at least a part of it's gonna be used. So this fabric has this kind of strip of pansies running through it. At the moment, it's in white, black, and pink. The only color here that is even remotely Featherington is the pink. So what I thought I would do is I would actually color in the black and the white. That's right. We're doing it dodgy style here. My darling husband gave me these permanent markers uh, for Christmas and I'm just going to color them in. <laughs> so to also add a little bit of lift to my fake lace, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to be utilizing some of this trim that I have left over from my Jigglypuff outfit. Uh, this was also given to me. And this is a pink and white rose trim. Very, very sweet. I'll be coloring in the white roses um, and I will be adding that to the lace as well. Okay, so that's all the fabric. However, there's one last thing I wanna share and it's this wig. This wig I bought ages ago for a cosplay that just never happened. It's this beautiful lace front in this orange, which is very similar to Penn's color. It does need to be curled and styled, and that's going to be fun for me. I love wigs. But, hey, why not? This is a scrap epic challenge, ladies and gentlemen. Let's use the stash. Okay, well that's everything. Let's crack on with it. G'day and welcome to the voiceover. So I decided it'd be fun to start with the trim that evening. So with my trusty markers, I began the slow process of coloring in the flowers. All right, so this is what I'm thinking so far for the trim. Now keep in mind, it's just gonna be the pansies essentially as a strip. So what I've done is I'm coloring them in as yellow and green. So the white and the black previously and doing the centers of the pink as the purple. Then what I'm doing is I'm gonna layer over the top this uh, pink flower trim that I have, and I'm coloring those in in yellow and um, orange, and then putting them with a purple center. And then, so it's like this little running one. It's over the top, and I think it will work for a Featherington. <laughs> okay, so I have made the trim. Uh, it took longer than I expected, but it is gloriously hideous. I love it. So now is the long process of cutting it out. Um, so I've done this little bit, but I've got all of this left to do. Hopefully there's enough because I really don't want to make more of it. <laughs> So I finished doing the trim and I'm really, really happy with it, except I took a photo of it and I looked over it and I realized that the pink is now just too light. So I was going to be cutting out my fabric this evening, but instead I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to darken this pink to make it more of that real magenta vibes. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, and tomorrow I will cut out the fabric. Ah, <sighs> yeah, I think I'm just going to do this off camera. <laughs> Good morning. So it is the next day and the trim was complete. I really went overboard with it. <laughs> um, I ended up like coloring it pink and then adding gradients to it. So uh, it's, it was a lot of fun. So hopefully I've got enough. Be I, I'm not sure I do, but we'll, we'll see. I can always make more. Anyway, today we are moving on and we're going to start the dress. So I'm not even going to make a mock-up of this. I'm just going to launch straight into it because I've used the pattern before. I know that the shoulder, f f the shoulder straps at the front need to uh, be extended. But other than that, it should work fine. It's not that complicated. So, you know what? Let's just crack on. Let's just have some fun with it.
Okay, so now I'm going to do something completely historically inaccurate, and that is I'm going to be using some phrase stopper because this piece, which is the overlay for the front of the bodice, goes down a little bit past the pink under fabric. So I don't really want to do a seam there or anything like that because I'm going to be covering it up with the trim, but I need to make sure that it doesn't fray because this does fray quite badly. So once I do that, I will be able to pin it together like I have all the other pieces that are being overlaid. And then I'm going to put all of the different pieces, the ones that have the overlay and those that don't, through the overlocker so that that way I can basically stop all of it from fraying and then I can start putting it all together. Yay! Handy hint time. If you ever use Fray Stopper, open the lid and then get a thin old paintbrush. Dunk your paintbrush in and then brush on the Fray Stopper. This will give you an accurate and even amount of Fray Stopper where you need it and it limits accidents. Once that was done, I started lining up the overlays onto the corresponding under fabrics. I even prepared the sleeves. came time to overlocking, I just did it all at once, overlaid pieces and normal pink taffeta pieces together. Otherwise, they would all have frayed like no tomorrow. So just before I start filming, one thing I just wanted to point out is the fact that I am using this $100 machine, this brother that I bought for Terry, my husband, um, because my Janome is currently not working. Uh, I have to take it in for a service, but this entire dress is going to be sewn on this good little pocket rocket machine. <laughs> See, you don't have to spend lots of money to have a decent machine. This was 100 bucks. What you are seeing me do here is sewing the sleeve together. I would later regret this as I needed to unpick it. And then on to sewing the bodice pieces. Once the bodice pieces were mostly together, I pinned the lining and the outer fabric together. Oh, see how I pinned the shoulders? I will sew that in the next clip. And then I will immediately regret my life choices, as it will need to be unpicked. Oh yes, and listen to this tranquil sewing machine. So quiet, right? No, Kiralee, don't sew the shoulders! Does anyone else cringe when you see mistakes caused by past you and you know that they were easily preventable? Once it was all sewn, I went ahead and gave everything a really good press. The base bodice is now complete. Uh, I am really happy with how it's turned out and came together quite easily. Um, my dear machine is very much struggling to get over certain points, but that's okay. It did the job. However, I am about to move on to the skirt now, and as I was just quickly refreshing myself with how to do the back part, I came across something that I completely forgot was even in there, and that is the sleeve binding. So I realized that I need to now cut out the sleeve binding um, and attach it to the sleeves, which I've already done up. So, whoopsies. So I've got to do that, um, but yeah, I want to work on the skirt next, so that way I can hopefully attach the skirt to this. I'm hoping that I can get that all sorted before I go to bed tonight and maybe even start the placement of the trim. So that's what we're hoping for. It's about 3.45 now in the afternoon, so making decent progress. All right, so just before I begin, I want to show you this. So this is the back panel um, of the skirt, and I have the placket, as they've called it, it's really not, um, basically attached to the slit that I've made into the skirt. So now I'm going to attempt to sew down this line and then repin it and sew it back up and then flip it all on the inside and then uh, hand stitch it down. It's just bias binding. Um, however, this is a bit fiddly and I think that there may be swear words as I use my machine, my trusty, trusty machine, uh, to sew it. So I'm gonna 
turn you off and we'll come back once it's done, okay? All right. It's done. It ain't pretty, but it's done. It's definitely not perfect. It's a bit wonky, but you know what? It's fine. Nothing in this world is perfect, right? All right, so next up, I need to put the front onto this, sew that up the side seams and then attach it to that bodice and gather down the back of the skirt and gather down the front of the bodice. So let's do that now. So the next thing I need to do is gather this down to 24 centimeters. So with the skirt done, the next thing I need to do is work on the bodice with just gathering down these two sections. So each of these sections need to be reduced by six and a half centimeters. So the new measurement here will be seven and a half centimeters. And there we go. So I'll just complete it on the other side now. Now it's time to put it all together. time so the dress is now done on my dress form and I've also pinned the trim over the top of it and I've realized one very important factor I need more trim so <laughs> my plan is for tonight I want to uh, do the sleeve band because I still haven't cut that out yet and hopefully just put that on the sleeves that would be good if I can get that done and then also start working on the second lot of trim so that's what my plans are for today or rather the rest of tonight it is now 7 30 so we'll see how much we can get done I cut out the sleeve band and ironed it like it was bias binding then I unpicked the sleeve did some gathering at the cuff and then pinned the sleeve band back in place and after I sewed the front I flipped it over and sewed the back of the band down by hand. And with that, day two was completed. Day three was literally me making more trim. Here is the only clip I filmed that day. G'day, so it's day four of this project and this is where I'm up to. The sleeves are just pinned onto the mannequin at the moment. But what my plan is, is because yesterday I spent making the last lot of the trim and my textures that I've been using are now well and truly dead. So I can't make any more. So what I've got is what I've got. So I'm going to make it work. But today, what I plan on doing is basically finishing this dress off. So there's a lot that I need to get done, but I think I can do it. I need to firstly put the trim onto the dress. So it needs to go around where I've pinned it now. A little bit extra needs to be put here. Then also on the cuffs of the sleeves. And then I'm going to see what I've got left over because that needs to be incorporated into the headpiece with a bow, I think. I need to check the reference images again. Um, so that needs to be done. I then need to sew the sleeves onto the dress. And I also need to put the closures in the back, which are three little buttons that I've got. So that, that I've also pulled from my stash. Thanks, man. Uh, and then the last thing would be just to hem it up. So I think it is doable for today. Um, I will be sewing the trim on by hand, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. Hopefully. But I really hope that I can get it done because tomorrow I just want to work on the wig and get that one sorted. Or even if I have time, start the wig tonight. Oh, the wish list. Uh, and yeah, I really hope to get this done within the next day or two. So keep cracking along, I guess. Hey, hey, no. So I was looking for my second piece of trim and this was being chewed on by Lacey. It doesn't look like she did too much damage, which is good. Oh my God, I could kill her. I could kill her. 
No, I don't love her too much. She's too cute, but oh my god, dog. Seriously, you've got a death wish. This here is the guilty one. Do you feel guilty for what you did? Let's continue. Oh, it's wet. Ew, gross. is now pinned into position so what I will be spending the next couple of hours doing probably is sewing it all down by hand now I will say that obviously the sleeves are still not attached because it's gonna be so much easier to sew that in when it's not attached to the dress but look I have enough of the trim left to make a collar and a hair piece and also some little earrings the reason why I've chosen to do this, other than the fact that I have just enough trim to do it, is because I looked through my jewellery and I do not have any jewellery that is obscene enough to be a Featherington piece. And definitely not something that would go with this. So, you know what? We're going to use the trim. We're going to make it happen. That's what happens with these inspired costumes anyway. <laughs> something to say about it. Anyway, that's a sign that I should keep on sewing. Right, so everything is hand sewn on. So now I'm going to put the sleeves in. After sewing in the sleeves, I moved on to the closures, or at least I tried. Okay, so I tried to do the closures and it did not work. Uh, so I did some buttons, which were very lovely, and then I did little hooks of elastic um, and tried it on, fits well. Only problem is, is of course the elastic stretches just that little bit too much. And so, you know, you can see my back. So I'm gonna take this out and think of plan B, which will probably be buttonholes, which just means it's going to get real difficult over the top of the trim. So whether I move that or that, I've, oh, I've got to have a think about it. I instead opted to sew on press studs since I simply couldn't stomach making buttonholes on this little machine or fiddling with the lace. It's test fit time and I am totally in the dress and it is all good. I ended up doing five press studs down the back, which I can't really show you, but <laughs> it's there, it's happening. Uh, they're working pretty good. I just can't hulk out of this as I've just discovered, but you know what? It's fine. A lady should not be hulking out of her dress anyway. Uh, so the next thing or rather the last thing to do is hemming this because I'm short. Uh, not quite as short as Nicola, who, who plays Pen. Uh, I think I'm about four inches taller than her, but I'm still relatively short. So I'm going to probably do it so it's just to the floor, like I've kind of done here, because I plan on wearing it with like low heels. But yeah, so I just need to pin that around, and then I will probably hand sew that in. Um, just so that it will look a little bit nicer than machine stitch because that will show up something chronic if I do it to this fabric and don't want that. Even Bridgerton didn't do that so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Alright, let's keep cracking on, hey? Alright, bye. The first thing I needed to do was cut off about two inches from the hemline and then I re-overlocked it. Then afterwards, I ironed it up and hand stitched it into place. By doing it this way, I only caught one thread of the fabric as I sewed it down. This meant it was basically invisible. So it's towards the end of day four. Sorry for the lack of updates. Uh, I had to put the battery on to charge. However, I got the dress completely done, so I did actually add an additional hook to the back closure to stop the 
hulking out of the dress uh, and I've also done the hem as well so that's all fine and dandy it's looking great what I also did was I went ahead and I made these cute little earrings uh, so that's the first piece of jewelry done so in terms of accessories I've got the hair head piece to do or hair piece to do and also the necklace uh, and the wig so I think what I'm going to do tonight is I might actually pull out the wig give it a brush and maybe start setting that up um, I have an idea of how I'm going to do it and hopefully it will work so fingers crossed Good evening, it's 11.30 at night on day four of this make and I thought I would stay up because I'm about to have my video premiere and I thought that it was a good time to set the curls into this wig so I have got about one quarter left of the hair to do and I've got these tiny little rollers to put it into and then I'm going to use the boiling water method to curl that. I've got a tutorial for that one shameless plug i'll include that there the reason why i'm squatting down is because the clamp doesn't really fit on my desk all that much so or rather my table it fits better on a chair so that's what we're working with <laughs> so i think that that's where i'm going to leave it for today i will jump back on tomorrow Good morning and welcome to the start of day five, hopefully the last day that I will be working on this cosplay. Um, so last night I did go ahead and finish off curling the wig and then I poured boiling water all over it. So that is now all set. However, I think that I might just leave it until this evening to style it. I'm going out today so that really limited limits how much time I've got to spend on this project today uh, however yeah I want to leave that for as long as possible to really set those curls in place uh, so this morning what I'm going to do before I leave is to make the necklace and to make the headpiece Okay, so this is all that I've got left of the trim. So this main piece here, I've marked out the width of my neck. So I'm gonna cut here and then I'm gonna attach it to some ribbon and that's going to be the necklace. And then what I've got left here will be what I'll use within the headpiece. So the next thing I need to do is grab some ribbon to mount this on because it's just going to be a really simple tie at the back of my neck. And then I also need to grab a comb because I will need something to mount probably the rest of this onto. Uh, and also I will need to make a bow. I need to have a look at the reference image again. So I'm going to do that first. Yeah, crack on. at night and I have just got home from <laughs> catching up with my family uh, got changed into PJs of course priorities uh, I also didn't really get all that much done this morning because a friend messaged me and told me that I could get free fabric and oh my gosh did I get some free fabric so I will show you what I got just because well why not everyone loves a bit of free goodness right uh, but it does mean that I'm a little bit behind schedule. So what I need to do is I still need to finish off the necklace. I began sewing it, did not complete it at all. Uh, and I still need to do the hairpiece, so I definitely need to do that. I checked the wig and unfortunately it's still a bit damp. So I either need to blast that with a hairdryer or I just give it another couple of hours. So maybe another overnight and then style it tomorrow morning, which is totally doable as well. We were planning on doing the shoot in the afternoon so that should not be an issue but yeah <laughs> today did not go as planned <laughs> at all i completed the necklace and then decided to make the bow before adding the rest of the lace to the comb because the bow was a little bit more fiddly the first bow i made was not long enough so i had to remake it but waste not want not 
I use the first bow as the tails of the second bow. This is me adding them together. Next, I used the cosplayer's best friend, aka the hot glue gun, to attach the lace to the comb, and I covered up the dark green or black with some offcuts of the yellow and pink flowers. I also glued an alligator clip to the back of the bow. currently 11 p.m. on day five of this project and I have completed my necklace and also I've got my earrings in did that last night as you know but I've also done my hair accessories as well which is a bow and a kind of hair comb thing happening using the last of my lace which is here or rather my trim really uh, I had two and a half meters and that's all I've got left crazy so Dress is done, accessories are done, only the wig left to do and I just did not get to her today for reasons. <laughs> but it will be done tomorrow, I will style it tomorrow, I'll put these in there and then we will be good to go to take some photos and see how it all turns out. So see you tomorrow. Good morning, it's the beginning of day six. We are going to crack on, as I mentioned last night, with the wig and then once that's all sorted and all styled, then I will be taking photos and doing a video tonight to wrap this video up. Day six, let's get this done. I also realized last night as I was drifting off to sleep that I think I need to put some extra clips into the wig to kind of hold it in place. So I might do that before I take out the curlers, but <sighs> nearly there. A really good tip with wigs is to invest in some toupee clips like these ones. They are super easy to sew into the wig base and will help secure your wig to your head like there's no tomorrow. Basically, you could stand in the cyclone with this and it won't come off. I haven't tested that, please don't test that. After the clips were sewn in, I then cut the mesh down with some pinking shears. This helps blend the lace front nicer into the hairline rather than a blunt straight cut. And then it was time to take out all the curlers. It's so bouncy. I turned off the camera whilst I did battle with the taming of the curls. But the little side front curls needed some extra love and attention. So I hit them with a curling iron, pinned the curls to let them cool, and then took them out. I eventually also cut these curls shorter. It is now 1 p.m. in the afternoon on day six and the wig is finally done, which means the cosplay is finally done. I had to turn off the camera a few times while I was figuring out the styling of this because I got, well, a little bit self-conscious because I hate doing wigs so much. That's why I leave them to the last thing to do or I just don't wear one, which I've done recently. So later this afternoon, my husband and I are going to go and get some video of me wearing this gown with full makeup, all of that good stuff and we'll get some photos as well. So I'm going to put that in right now and afterwards join me as I give you my final thoughts. Okay, so now it's time for my final thoughts on the project. Overall, I had so much fun making this outfit. It was a quick project. It only took me six days, realistically. If I had tried harder, I probably could have completed it in about three. There was a fair bit of procrastination, let's be honest. Overall, I'm really, really happy with the end result. I think that it is actually working together quite nicely and is definitely giving Featherington vibes. What I really like about this cosplay is that number one, it was easy to create, but number two, it was so much fun. Number three, I also had all the fabrics in my stash, which 
I love using, I love being able to use my stash, put these limitations on me, force me to think outside the box, and bam, you've got something individual and unique. That's the same thing. But you know what I mean, I'm excited by it. This hair looks a little bit more Rococo than Regency, but eh. I also want to give a massive shout out to my amazing patrons who were following the progress as it was happening through Instagram. So to my patrons, thank you very much for giving me the encouragement as I was going along this crazy adventure. I do also want to give a massive shout out to my Tender on Month tier patrons who are Justin Ghosty, Rogue Threads, Andrea Halasco, and Sapsoro Revealed. So thank you so much for joining me on this adventure of creating this Penelope Featherington inspired look. See, you never know what you can create just by pulling fabrics from the stash. You may have to colour certain things, but you know, it can work. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a like and leave us a comment below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!